You currently locked in to the porch podcast. It's your boy, B. Jones, a.k.a. Bolo, and you know when I'm pulling up to the porch. I can't pull up without my dog. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Big Smitty, a.k.a. D-Nice. And you heard what Bolo just said. This is the porch. Welcome. What's going on, my brother? How you doing today? Bless, highly favored, brother. Can't, can't complain. You know, every time we get on the porch, we got to talk about God. Amen. Ten toes. You know, Amen. another day. Amen, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you feeling? Hey, I'm blessed, man. It's been a it's been a hell of a day, a, a real busy day. You know what I mean? That's kind of how 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 these Mondays are. But listen, I can't complain, man. Busy means you know you're working, and working means money. So I can't complain about that, man. So progression, progression. But, I'll take it. I'll take that's what it. It's all about, man. And like you, like we always do, man. You know when we come to the porch, we gotta bring some heavy hitters. And turn it up. Turn us up. Turn up another notch, man. And we we brought another heavy hitter to the porch. And I'm not going to keep my man waiting because he's been waiting a long time. He's a comedian, an Emmy-winning producer, an actor from South Carolina. Mm. The one and only Ron G. Welcome to the court. Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? Good, good, good. good. How we Can doing? I tell y'all, first of all, I'm happy y'all knew my credits before I came on. Sometimes I do podcasts. They be like, hey, man, tell everybody your credits. Like, don't do me like that, bro. <laughs> don't hey, do that to me. because they being lazy. They ain't do no homework. Oh, they was excited so that they got you on. They like, all right, you do the rest. Nah, man. That's well, a fact. I appreciate y'all, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, sir. Hey, so, Darnell, I got I to say oh, something. Yeah, pre yeah. show. My man Ron G said, "Ain't nothing, ain't nothing to do in Indiana but procreate, you know, make babies." What, well, I mean, what you think about that? D Nell from basketball, Indy. right? What else? In basketball. Look, D I, what you gonna say? What you D gonna Bolo, say? D I didn't say nothing. I wanted to save that for the show. So, Ron, I live in L.A. now, but I'm a Rizzy from Indianapolis, Indiana, born and raised, three one seven Far East Side. So, born and why you left, though, right? <laughs> I left for career career reasons, but okay. but. Indiana taught me grit. It taught me discipline. Mm. It taught it taught me uh, 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 hon how to be hungry, how to work for stuff. Indiana is a good place to build character, Ron. That's all I'm trying to tell you. That's all I'm <laughs> that trying to like tell South you. Carolina, man. South Carolina the same way. I feel like it was a, a great place, place to grow up, man, because everything that made me who I am right now, like family, community, growing up in a household where we all just roast each other. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Lord, uh, my family hood, love Jesus, uh, <laughs> love to fight, talk trash. <laughs> and it gave me the tools I need to be out here because if you ain't battle tested before you move out here, bro, uh, this uh, this city gonna want these receipts. LA gonna give you exact change. Hey, exactly. They gonna eat you up. I tell people all the time, man. Like, yeah, LA is not for for for, for the weak of mind. It ain't for everybody, man. You see a lot of people come out here with a dream, and unfortunately, it, it, it you know they don't reach them dreams, and you might see them on the street. Like for real, it, it's it's tough. You know what I'm saying? So if you making it out in LA, I respect you, man, for bro. sure. Mm -hmm. L.A. and Vegas is built off losers. Ooh. Say, say, say that one more time, you Vegas, you, It ain't because everybody, if everybody winning, there's no likes in Vegas. That's real. L.A. is the only place I know where they can charge $3,000 for four, 500 square feet because your dream is attached to it. And I've seen a lot mm. of people go home, bro. Damn. You see they ain't built off winners. If you win, but you got to determine what success is to you. Because some people, you know, see in their head what they think they want, but God will give you what you need. And then... You live a good life. Like even now, like my wife doesn't have to work. I I'm a homeowner. Uh, I do what I love to take care of my family and I'm not rich by any means, but I take care of my family doing what I love. And for me, I'm rich already. You know what I'm saying? Thousand percent. Thousand percent. That's funny you said that because I was just telling somebody the other day is so many times we always associate being rich with uh, currency and a dollar amount. Right. But it's the, being able to be, you know, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, like all of that in, entwined. And if you if you hit that on all cylinders, man, that's the richness. Because you got so many people who got a lot of money, but they got cancer right now. Or they hate their life. Or they Bro, are you it. rich and morally bankrupt? Like, morally, yeah, I feel exactly. like the blessing is getting the success and enjoying it. God gives you the ability to enjoy your success. I, I have a lot of rich friends who are miserable. Mm. When I say miserable, and it's crazy when you see people who have more than you, and they be jealous of your life. Mm. Damn. Ooh. Hold on, hey, right. Talk that it's, talk, it's, Ron it's been G. Two minutes and 37 seconds, and Ron is dropped. He dropped about eight gems already. Easy. For real, bro. Oh, like, it's, that's why I said it's hard to be friends with people that want your life, man. That's real, man. man. It's crazy, too, Ron. Like you said, like you soul. said a minute ago, you said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not rich financially yet, but I'm rich in life. And it's crazy because what you like, where you're at right now, it's kind of like the goal that, that, that I think I, I've had, meaning that. I want to get to a point where this podcast or some of the other shows I'm, I'm, I'm a part of 
is just making enough to where I'm able to live comfortably. Wife, you know, my wife, she's a nurse, but like if she wants to step down, she can. If she want to keep, right, you know what right. I mean? Just, just have that freedom to be able to make those decisions. Cause that's I mean, what decent dudes want to do. Decent yeah. dudes want to make sure their wife work work because she wants to. Right. Not right. She have right. to. Exactly. Cause even 100%. now, like my wife got sick when she was pregnant. Y'all saw my little one. Um, mm -hmm. she got sick when she was pregnant and she had a terrible pregnancy and a terrible labor and delivery. Mm -hmm. And she can't work now because my, my little one requires a lot of work. But if I had to live off her money, I don't we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'd be a worker now. Right. It's real. At a job that I hate. So luckily enough, she and this is why I say too, I know I don't, I don't know how deep we can go, but Let's go I always tell people women get their heart because they date a man who don't have a plan. And if he don't have a plan for himself, he don't have a plan for you. And then we get our heart broke because we're not clear about our plan because we know what our purpose is. But sometimes you ain't clear about your plan. Like I'm a clean comedian, but I dated girls who was fine, thick and with no sense of humor and a little pinch of Jesus. Mm. <laughs> what am I doing? And, and you knew that wasn't right for you. You knew that wasn't connected to your purpose and your goal, but you just was letting that flesh speak at the time. We about to talk Bro, about a Ooh. crack in the window of a plane on the ground is not a problem. A Wait, say that one more time. In the window of a plane on the ground, a plane, on the ground. A plane has a crack in the window on the ground is not a problem. But when you fly, where you're trying to go, the the plane will implode because it can't handle that pressure. That crack. Ooh. So you better sort that out before you take off. That's why Ooh. men who don't know their purpose, they date for where they at, and not where they're going. That's why by the time you get to where you gotta go, you outgrew your person, and you be like, she be like miserable because you like you used me. I was on with you when you had nothing, but you you weren't clear about who you was, and you married a seat filler. Mm. He about to make me cry on the porch. It's been he five minutes, bro. Nah, for real. I ain't never, we ain't never had a That's guest real. come on this quick and get straight to it. Straight to it. Like, you no said we can talk about it, right? I heard oh, you talk, yeah, about, we we here. talk about Jesus. Okay, all right. Oh, of I'm course. Here. That's the port. Yeah, please talk about Jesus. Okay. Of course, man. Of course. I love it. I love Damn. it, man. Like having someone just, I feel like we family. We just we just actually met. And we kicked it off. And we kicking it like, like we didn't know each other a couple years. So now well, let's do it. Let's do it. So listen, most men. We put women in three categories. And I'm saying this because I know a lot of times women get pissed off, feel like we hard on them, but sometimes you gotta you gotta give them what they need so they can make a, a logical decision. Yeah. Uh I feel like men, we put women in three categories: wifey, right. fun girl, and seat filler. Mm. Wifey, down. fun girl, and seat filler. If I'm wrong, if I'm missing one, please let me know. When you're wifey, a woman does not have to ask where this is going, what are we doing? What are your intentions? Uh when you're a uh, fun girl, it's it's uh the Dracula schedule. Yeah. It's all transactional. And then seat filler is the tough one. So for men, if you ain't clear about your purpose, your purpose, you usually married a seat filler. And a lot of my friends I've seen go, go through divorce, they married a seat filler. And the seat filler is not a bad person, but they ain't your person. That's the person. You, usually Ooh. most people work their junk out on a seat filler and then get married shortly after to the person they're supposed to be with. But when you mm -hmm. married a seat filler, they usually can't go where you want to go. Even though it's not bad and it's not wrong, y'all already know, like, every, every man here, you know, it's a seat filler. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, it's good and it's God's best. Yeah, some something, something to get you prepared for that next level. Everybody ain't ready for God's best because God's best requires work. Every blessing that you get requires work. If you ask for a kid, once that kid get here, that's when the work starts. When you ask for marriage, once that marriage starts, that's when the work starts. Every start. blessing requires work. If you pray for a new job, that's when the work starts. It don't car it don't start just because you got it. That's, that's when the real. real everybody ain't ready for the work, but they ask for the blessing. That's real. Like so many people, like I, I hear the saying all the time, is like, you know. So many times people, when they pray, they ask for it on a platter instead of asking for the ingredients to get you to that point. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like all you need is the the ingredients and that's when you actually have to do the work to make the outcome, the outcome. You know, right, it's not just right. going to happen to you overnight, but God right. going to bless you with, you know, some of those ingredients to get you to that point. And I'm going to challenge you. I feel like we don't, what I do when I pray, I say, God, give me the things that's in my heart, but also give me the resources to sustain what I ask for. Mm. Cause that's what we don't pray for. We don't pray for the sustaining. Cause men, we're great at chasing. Every most mm -hmm. men, especially when you ain't committed, like you, we mm -hmm. great at chasing. But sustaining, sustaining a marriage, sustaining a career, and being committed to something requires work that most of us ain't ready to do. So we chase the thing, but we don't chase the things that allow us to sustain it once we get it. Mm. That's real. That's discipline that's real too. Game. Yeah, that's what it comes down to uh, being mm -hmm. a disciplined man. You know what I'm saying? You can ask for it, but as human nature, especially man, you know, you you will get what you what you prayed for. And then a year later, a couple months you later, keep it. Not, you don't know how to keep it, but now, but now you're already trying. Your mind wants something else, or, or you, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't know how to fully maximize the blessing mm -hmm. that you just asked for. You right, know? and your character don't match what you asked for. Right, so your character can't sustain you because you ain't working. Your character, you worked on the craft. Wow, that's why people need PR to speak on your behalf because 
you know you're gonna say something stupid because you ain't worked on your vocabulary you ain't worked on using your feelings and your emotions your emotional catalog you worked on the craft that's usually why people who are very successful they have a bunch of yes men around mm. that's real man that's everybody real. know everybody already know yeah. who that person is you know what i'm saying yeah mm-hmm. for sure but they we don't want to mess with money because they got access yep man oh man uh, I, I love hey <laughs> we here. We, here. Listen, we did not porch family we did not plan for this to happen it just kind of happened naturally and that's why we love to do this man because you never know which direction the porch is going to go uh but so we appreciate man for starting to show off a, a, a little differently you know what i'm saying let that's... me shut up i'm sorry y'all go do your thing man. No, 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 we, good, love man. we love it we Don't love listen it. to me man it's the porch that's, that's, that's what we want you know what i mean so yeah man so but look yeah let's transition to our porch news uh, I know we got some uh, interesting topics to, to to start to show off before we dive into all things, you know, about my guy, Ron. So, Bolo, tell us what we got in the news today. Okay, family, welcome to Porch News. Okay, in Porch News, check this out. So, obviously, you heard on social media, Shannon Sharp said he wanted a woman so bad that he paid for a divorce because he felt like she was the one. Mm. So, Porch family, we got to ask you, is this the length that we're willing to go to get the woman that we want? Oh, I'm gonna jump in first, Ron. I'm gonna jump in Go first. Ahead, bro. It's 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 ironic that we had this question and we just exactly we just got done talking about you know what I mean the right one. And I, it's crazy how the connections you know happen, right? So at first I was like, man, nah, I'm not, I'm not about to pay for somebody else's divorce. Like she got to handle her business first before before I can before we can connect. But now the more I'm thinking about it and, and listen to Ron, if if you know. That woman is meant for you. Like you got, whether it's just that you got a sign from God, you've been like, whatever the case is, if you know that's, that's your one. And the only thing you feel like that's kind of uh, in the way, being a roadblock is, is, oh, just, is the, right. It's a husband. It's <laughs> <laughs> a roadblock. <laughs> but no, you was like, my blessing? it was more context to it. More context. She was, uh, they were split up. She was trying to get a divorce. Oh, okay. I'm like, he's talking about blessing. No, no, she was trying to get a divorce. Like she, I guess on his end, he wasn't, he was being difficult, complicated, money was getting involved. They were being split, whatever. So it is, it's just finalizing everything from a financial standpoint. So giving that context, I'm like, well, m- maybe it ain't the worst thing in the world to help from a funding standpoint get the divorce done. That's, like, that, that, that's just my two cents. But y'all let me know. I, maybe I'm tripping. You got it, bro. <laughs> you know what? Look, I'm going to keep it real, real honest with you. That whole travesty right there, that's just God's way of saying, don't go into muddy waters. Don't go ahead and muddy yourself in some situations that's already muddy. Like, you're already putting putting yourself in the situations that you you know it's already messed up. Like, I get it that, like, you want this person, but I feel like at the end of the day, that's just the flesh talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this person already got stuff going on, she preoccupied in certain situations, and it it's something that's holding her back from getting to that next point, then that's that sign that people just gotta gotta take in to figure out that hey, mm. this is this is not it. This don't work at this time. I feel like everything happens for a reason. Everything has to click at the right at the right point at the right moment. And as you can see, he was speaking in past tense because it didn't work. You feel right. what I'm saying? So I feel like you know when you when you find that person, you know for whatever reason, like God makes everything work. You know what I mean? And and for some reason, when you get those instances where things aren't aligned in the way it should be, that should be your telltale sign. That's that knowledge, wisdom, Ooh. and understanding coming in. Ooh. All right. Man, I'm a big fan of letting God do his thing. Uh, I think a lot of humans, especially the church folks, we are caregivers by nature, and we think we can fix people. And what I learned is based on my dating and how I was raised as a child, my love language is trying to fix people. Mm. Right. Usually... When you do that and you don't give people opportunity, which I call letting God do his thing, you become God in their life and God get very jealous and take his hand off you. Mm, interesting perspective. So you jumping in somebody's marriage, trying to expedite it to get what you want. I feel like God will let you do your thing. And whenever you're done, you're going to have to come see him. And again, I've done that before in my own way. It wasn't as extreme right. as that. But again, like I dated fixes, I dated fixer uppers on purpose. So I had to look at myself. But then when I met my wife, I realized my tool belt was for me because I was broken and I didn't want to do the work because I was so used to fixing. When you're fixing, you never have to look at you. You know what I'm saying? So, right. uh, yeah, I said, God going to give you your receipts. Uh, but also, you know, when you have money, you think you're invincible. And, oh, that's what I said. God is always going to give you, life going to give you your, your receipts for whatever you put, put into it. So, mm. yeah, how you start is how you, 
you play like you practice and how you start is how you finish. If you start out wrong, it usually ends wrong. Damn. I've never seen somebody start out wrong and they get better. That's wild. Because they always point. say how you get your girl is how you can lose your girl. Yeah, right. they do say that. They do so say that. Real. For sure, for sure. And like I said, just for just for clarity, I'm not telling somebody to go out here and <laughs> literally break up a like, you know, could commit yeah. adultery and based upon the context, they were split. This is a financial thing. So that's the only reason why I'm saying I can understand a little bit more, but I definitely lean more on which what you two fellas are saying. Like I couldn't see myself doing that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I and know. still, like when you break up with somebody, like you can't heal in a marriage. You got to be out of it in order to get better and heal. And so for me, I don't want nobody who's half in, half out, and still trying to, to it. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have, you gotta go to therapy and unpack that stuff first. Yeah. So That's when real. you do that, I might consider it. But to catch you while it's fresh, just because you're cute, and we got a good vibe. Because sometimes that vibe comes because some person is trying to sub subcontract the things they're not getting in their marriage. Mm. So mm. you lean into it. That's why it's easy to love somebody when you when you heartbroken. That's why it's easy to jump into another relationship because you just don't want to feel what you're supposed to feel. Got you. He jumping ball. That's a good point, man. That's a good point. So, yo, I definitely want to hear from our porch family in the comments, right? The ones on caffeine or even our audio listeners to give y'all opinions on this interesting situation. But Bolo, what we got next in the porch news? Okay, porch family, check this out. So, um, Obviously, on social media, um, it was said that France proposed a new bill that would enforce influencers to disclose if they use filters. Mm. So <laughs> it would require them to label the filter. And then even if they have cosmetic surgery, y'all, they have to label that they use cosmetic surgery in the pictures. Now, we got to ask y'all, in the world of social media today, will social media still be social media if everybody had to label if they had filters or co cosmetic surgery? Ooh. Um. Man, that's a good question, man. I, first of all, I, I I think it's a very when I saw cause I saw this too, Bolo, and I was at first I was like, what? Like this is this is this is kind of interesting. This is weird to me. Like, why do I have to give out some of my personal information, especially on the right. side of cosmetic surgery? I feel like that's a little too far. Like, I, yeah. I should have to tell y'all if I got some surgery done in my face or I I, I got some fake biceps in my own. So like, that's your real nose. Mean. You don't think the world need to know? I don't think y'all need to know that. You know what I'm saying? Man, I think I'm think... being nosy. You know what I mean? Now, <laughs> I'm being nosy. <laughs> that's my business. That's I'm my being business. nosy. Uh, you know that's I mean? silly. Now, the only time I would say that I think you should disclose information or, or should have to be forced to disclose it is if you're an influencer who's you built this huge community based upon uh, based upon your looks, right? And let me give you an example. So let's say you're a, a fitness guru, fitness influencer, and you're telling people, hey, if you do X, Y, and Z, you'll look like me. When, it, when, when in reality, all that surgery, all that's fake. I think that's, I think that's foul. You can't be selling to people a dream when you didn't really grind for it. So I think in a situation like that, but in the hey, Instagram, though, be on for it. No, I feel like, I was about to say, I feel like people do that Isn't shit. Isn't that what now, Instagram bro. is? Instagram Actually, is the flex. It's the lifestyle. I, I I definitely agree I, with that. I, no, it, it definitely is. I just think it's different when you when you're when it's like like yo your whole purpose, your whole business, everything about you is based upon the fact that you're like you're you're selling this. You're 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 telling people, hey, you want your chest to look like this, your face to look oh, like this. Bro. Do this workout. But do though. I don't but think look, that, bro, look right. at look at look at the females, bro, with the big asses that that promotes like clothes and stuff, or right. how a swimsuit looks, or. When they go work out, like half of them girls have had some type of surgery to modify their body, but now they're pushing a product or pushing a, a piece of clothes to make them look good in that <laughs> in that piece of, of clothes. I, I see personally, I don't have a problem with, with those examples though. Cause at the end of the day, like that's just you posing in the bikini or whatever. And yeah, the brand is benefiting off of that. But bro, but like, that booty made out of stomach meat. Come on now. That's a little, <laughs> that's a little unfair. <laughs> That's a little unfair. That that belly made out, that booty made out of back fat. Back shoulder meat. Shoulder meat. That booty nah, made out of real. shoulder meat. You sitting there selling fashion double jeans? I nah, hear you, real. man. I hear. So, so, so what you saying, yeah. Ronald? Do you agree with the bill? You think that's an influencer? I mean, you you technically you technically are considered somewhat of like an IGN for based upon your following, right? But I don't sell nothing. I, my sale is my funny, you know what I'm saying? But you can't cheat the code on it. But what this is the thing, this is the thin line because right. if you're gonna do that, you gotta go after everybody. Because right. I know, yeah, I know true. some Christian influencers that be selling people on stuff, Ooh. and they are straight up scammers. Like I, <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> they be selling real estate and financial freedom. Ain't took a cool. class or nothing. And I'm like, bro, like you got to get everybody. You got to get the the posers who are always doing the real estate classes, the ones who are doing the financial Real. freedom with the nice car, because there's nothing to rent a car. Yeah. And then tell people, this is all you got to do is get to my class. This is how you get six oh, figures gosh. online. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. nothing. So you got to expose everybody if you're going to do just physical features. Now, I, I do feel like before you marry somebody, you got to expose that stuff. I feel like before oh, you get agree. married. Agree. Yeah. Y'all hear about the Asian guy who sued his wife? Because the kid oh, no. came out and the kid had her old face? What you Ooh. lying? No lie. No, dude. He, he uh, this Asian guy. He um, they got something called a princess surgery in Asia. Just Google princess surgery. Yo, it's crazy. Um, when they break their whole jawline and make it like real, like China dollish kind of face, yeah. even if they have a flat, wide face. But anyway, he sued his lady because their kid came out with her old face, and he's like, and he won too. So Ooh. I feel like before you get married, we need to look at your your uh your bank account. Yeah. Your checking statement, your your medical history, which your if you had work done, yep. Uh, we need to do an STD check, yeah. And then Definitely just for, for for giggles, we need to do run your uh, credit score. Just run your credit score. Let's just see. Just so I can know if I can trust you more than anything. <laughs> no, for real. We need to see who you really are. That credit score. Let me score see some high school know. photos. Actually, let me see your high school photos. Hey, it's almost That's like you, you know NFL players. You know when they in a the draft. They go all the way back to your middle school teacher to find out who you really are. They do. They do yeah, all their homework. Real. So it's, it's the same thing with, with a relationship. Like I'm, I'm gonna talk to your your first grade teacher. I want to know how I many times. I wish it was mandatory. I want to talk Bend to your ex. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That one. That one dangerous. Now that's that's dangerous, Ron. You that's sure? Real dangerous. Yeah. Because according cause to every female, all their exes is toxic and was narcissistic. No, for real. Everybody ex was tar- toxic and narcissistic. I'm like, right. They was everybody. The right. Everybody. What's the common denominator, y'all? Uh... Uh, this conversation. Don't get me started, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I know. No, that's definitely an interesting one. I know me. I don't really use no filters like that. Like, you know, you gonna see all my blemishes and everything. So, hey, it's not gonna affect me. But hey, to, to, to those each people, to each his own, man. Do your thing. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying it will be interesting if they made us do it. Because I, I am curious of some of these influencers if they'll be posting at the same clip that they as they're posting now. Or would, they, or would they kind of take a step back because they don't want people to see the real them or so. And that's also why you see a girl with a million followers in two photos. Yeah. Not nah, for real. Facts. <laughs> you got to get rid of all that old evidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. But definitely, like I said, want to hear from our porch family and, and, and get your opinions. But now it's time to learn more about our special guest. Like I said, we got my guy Ron here from South Carolina. If you didn't mm. catch the it. 48 Bluff Road. Come on now. You heard what you just said, man. Emmy winning producer and actor. So I got to ask you this, Ron. A lot of times we ask our guests this for our first question. Who is Ron G? Hmm. It's funny because like who I am is evolving into something that I saw, but to watch it come to life is crazy. Um, I'm a country little boy from South Carolina with a dream. You know, I grew up in a little dysfunctional household, but I figured it out. And what I learned is all the childhood junk that I hated about my life and about my family was the recipe to like springboard me to my career and my passion. And like, I've been doing this thing for a while. And like, for some reason, I always had a thing for relationships. I don't even know why. Like, I just always because I had, I thought I was a decent guy. And I always did. I never got the results I wanted out of my dating. And I feel like I had a conversation with God. And God was like, you'll never have what you want until you change the way you act. And I feel like, man, we're very intentional, even though we know what we're doing sometimes, like, we sit on information like the big joker. Yeah, until yeah. we need to drop it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But for me, once my path came clear about the relationship space, uh, God gave me what I needed when I adjusted my attitude. And then I found my person, which validated the relationship stuff I talk about. So I talk about relationship stuff a lot. And I also know that part of my mantle and thing is like uh, making marriage look cool. Like I, I didn't know that was a thing, but I feel like I personally know God was like, I'm not going to take you off until you get married. That's mm-hmm. that's that's the thing you need your covering you need before you take off because you already know you're reckless. But I'm gonna ensure it by giving you a son, so you won't do nothing stupid. Mm. But the way you're gonna do it makes people want to be a part of it. Because me and my wife, we have a good time, bro. Like I literally, our superpower is we have fun no matter what. We don't been through miscarriages, family death. You know, I, my first year of marriage, I didn't work at all, but she had my back, and like we 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 went through all, bro. But her, the way we love each other, we always. Um, communicate by adding a little orange juice to it. You know what I'm saying? So now 
I feel like as much as I love comedy and acting, the thing I'm doing with my marriage is bigger than all of that. And I feel like it's going to change a whole generation when people be like, yo, because everybody be like, I ain't never seen it before, but you still choose a career you ain't never seen before. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I ain't sure. never seen a happily married person, but, but yeah, but you chose a whole career. And then your family went to college and you doing that blindly. Right, mm -hmm. right. And your job treats you like trash and remind you ain't enough every day. But when it comes down to marriage, that's the specific, I can't do that because you know how people are. Like, no, humans are trash in general. You just got to find a human that you like and figure this life out with. So for me, what I'm involving into is way bigger than what I think I am. And it's crazy like to experience it because I'm in my moment right now. Like it's happening. The things I've move out to LA for like it's literally happened like when I say this year like I had to be in LA this long to experience this year for it to happen if that makes any sense at all hey yeah and, and how, how long have you been out in uh, LA I moved to LA in 05 oh five Ooh. yeah man, talk about patience man in, in the journey uh, let me ask you this real quick because like as you were speaking like another just thought came to my mind Go ahead. what would you say is the biggest difference between Ron in 05 and Ron today just from a personal personal standpoint Man, uh, I didn't have the details, and there's a certain hope comes along with ignorance. Because mm -hmm. um, if God told me everything I had to go through to be how I am, I probably would have ran. But He didn't tell me everything because He wanted me to stay in it, and He'll spoon feed me and give me breadcrumbs to keep me going. You know what I'm saying? Right, so I won't right. be on suicide watch. But He gave me what I need. But now it's like I'm gonna just trust you blindly, God, and I know that you got me no matter what. Because it's one thing, like just how you are. You mentioned you want all the things that's in your head to flourish. You said I got a podcast and doing all this other stuff. Yeah. It's in your head. But what if? You had to do it 20 years for it to come to life. Would you still have the same tenacity and the mm. same fire? Would you perform year 15 like you would year one? You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like the way I perform, when you see me perform, I'm going to give you year one performance energy, even though I've been doing it for a while. Because like, this is why I'm here. I'm on this planet for this thing. You know what I'm saying? So right. I don't play with this gift that God gave me. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's, it's, it's just funny that, again, he didn't tell me everything, but now it's like, there is no plan B. There's no going back. There's no other option. And I, even when I'm depressed, even when I'm like, God, do you see me? Even when I call it when my um, my spirit be on tick tick, you know, you got a gas stove and you got yep. a tick tick and then the flame come on. Like yep. literally mm -hmm. three weeks ago, I'm sitting here like, God, come on, bro. Like you got, listen, I've been in this space too long and the feeling of feeling like you graduated and God ain't giving you nothing. Mm. When you know you graduated, when you know you did the work and you got to sit there and he's like, nah, I ain't called your number yet. You sit there, send your itis in your career. I'm like, come on, God. And he's like, no, because what I need to do is move some people out the way. I need to create some opportunities for you. So when the time happens, you can sustain it. Because if you do it on mm -hmm. your own energy, you're going to get tired and you're going to fizzle out. And I said, the greatest gift in L.A. is instead of being hot, being warm for a long time. Mm. Most people want to be hot. Being hot is only for a season. But when you warm, bro, you can be warm for 30 years and have a great career. Slow but most people don't, don't find the blessing in that. Man, like a, a crock, crock pot. Like a crock pot. Crock what pot about to say? All right. day. Right, because it's like it's almost like in love. If to me, people are like I'm so in love. No, in love is not sustainable. That's love right. is a choice. Grown people make the choose choice to love people when you don't feel like it. When Action. you're depressed, when you're like you know the career ain't popping. Like that's what grown. That's what love is. You show up when you don't feel like it, and I still open doors even though you got an attitude. And I know that you're wrong, but I could weaponize you being wrong because I got the facts, and my ego would tell me you don't ever talk to me like that. But I still be kind, even though I know I'm right and open doors and be kind to you in the meantime. That's what love is. Love ain't this magical, uh, warm and fuzzy that we right. think it is. Because mm -hmm. life happens. Yep. Life happens. If any of that makes sense. No, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I want to ask you a question. Obviously, you know, just from hearing you, you speak the last, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, I, your faith is extremely strong. And I feel like for most people, you don't really test your faith or know your faith until you sat in a storm for a little bit and you able you're able to get through it uh for you i guess what was that storm for you to like make you realize that okay this is this is my god this is the faith that i have and i'm pushing through regardless um sometimes i feel like when you're special god has a, not god but there's a target on your back hmm. you ain't a, when you ain't a threat you, you live I don't, I, i'm assuming everybody here christian yeah. when you're not a threat they don't go through the stuff that we go through. When you're special, God makes sure you battle test it before he puts you out there because he don't want you to look stupid and mm -hmm. it don't feel good. You're like, why well, I can't live like that? And every time you try to do that, he'd be like, nah, you can't, you're different. I'm, I'm going to let it fall apart. Every time you put your hand on it and try to step in the way of my process I have for you, I'm going to let it fall apart. That's, that's why I get the whole, I'm going to let you do you until you're done and you're going to come back and see me anyway. That's how he's always been with me. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the luxury of 
checking out. Some people, they get married, come home, check out. You go to work, you check out. God sent you to that, that raggedy job to check, to, to influence somebody while you're there. You know what I'm saying? He sent you to that house or that marriage to influence somebody while you're there. Most people check out and that's when the work is done. But we think, oh, I got this job. I'm going to just go to work, get in my cubicle, keep my head down. Or I'm going to go home and check out and, you know, pat my kid on the back, put them down and whatever. Like, no, like you, the work is done when you in these spaces that you don't feel like being in. And that's what mm-hmm. this whole journey is about, because being a Christian is all relationship. As much as we want to act like it's all the spiritual throwing scriptures at people. No, nah, it's literally relationship. When you're in that space, do you change the environment? Do you make it better? Whatever that thing is. Damn. Damn. I love it. No, I love it, man. And, and another okay. thing too, and you and you you mentioned your wife multiple times, obviously, you know, throughout the podcast, man. I just want to hear because again, we're all married men here. Uh, no. you know, how long? You, how long before you know, we yeah, Bolo, you go first. So I'll be I'll be five years in June. Oh, that's dope. Congrats, yeah. bro. I'll be Absolutely three three it. years in May. And you still in Indiana, Bolo? Yep, I'm yep, I'm in Indianapolis, yep. And uh, D, you still, you in LA? How Did you meet her in LA? Or you met her back home? Nah, so it, it, this is my high school sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't so. That's dope, bro. Yeah, I know Crazy. it's rare, man. That? I know it's rare, man. But yeah, Crazy. I just, I don't know, man. That? I guess me. <laughs> you knew her family. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, like, it, that's what it is, man. Like, not to completely side, you know. No, you good, conversation, bro. But like, no, this part of the, the conversation. It just, yeah, it's like for me, it was, I don't know. I was blessed to just have the mindset at a young age to know that I had somebody special and then like yeah. like you said beyond just her just me and her moms her family just a lot of correlation it just feels so easy to just mix intertwine our families our moms are cool it just from a young age you know what i'm saying and my girl just kept me like you mentioned about your wife i feel like my life has improved because of my girl like she's of kept course. me of focused course. Some, i know how i know how i, I am and I, I i have a wild side and i could go that route Most when you got somebody who you really love Keep you know what i mean care about honest it keeps you honest. You know, you still bump your head yeah. along the road. Of course you make mistakes, but like I ain't made no major mistakes. And a lot of it, a large part is because I had somebody who one, I care about, but also my girl, she from Detroit, man. And she just, ah, like, that's funny. <laughs> she's straightforward. She don't play bro. Yeah. She don't tell it like it is. If I, if I mess up, she going to, Hey, you need to get ain't stuff. Got no together. middle. Yeah. <laughs> ain't got no middle. It's, also, it's hot or cold. Let me ask you this. Since I know we all, I guess I'm going to say church boys. Uh, did you get married because of church pressure? No, oh, no, no, okay. uh, not for okay. me. But, but I do get married understand. real early. Church people, yeah, that's a people. fact. Yeah, you get, get married real early. early. That pressure. You don't want to burn for sin. You better get married. Might as well marry. <laughs> <Don't laughs> right. yeah. Now, me and my girl, we were together for a really yeah. long time. Like I said, I, I mean, it's our. This would be year three. So we've been together since high school. I'm 29. So we've been together for a long. Time. You get her to LA. That's wild. I mean, again, so at that point, I mean, like I said we had been together for shoot, like you know, almost 10 years. And I mean, uh, so I, I went to Ball State. Play football. That's where me and my guy uh, Bolo met in uh, Indiana. Uh, when I got done with football, I originally went to like a sales job. You know, I had a business degree. I didn't really know <laughs> what route I was going to go. You know what yeah. I mean? So back in Indy, me and her, we had moved into a place together and we, yeah. were, already, we were already living together. I get blessed with opportunities to, of a lifetime to come out to LA and get my foot in the door at Fox Sports. And, oh, no. and that, you know, and I just told her, like, hey, like, I, I talked to her first. Like, listen. This is a complete different. That's a, a one eighty of what we're of what, what what we had a plan in our life. But I felt like it was coming from God because like I never in my life ever 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 planned to come out to L.A. for no reason. You know what I mean? Being LA a Midwest boy, bro. it ain't. So when the way the way the opportunity <clears throat> came, I said, "Listen, this this is bigger than me. This there has to be. <clears throat> it has to be from God. There's no other logical mm-hmm. thing that came to my head." And my wife, she's a nurse, so that helped out as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. But she was like, oh. It's still a tough sale, though. How do you tell this woman from Detroit, hey, I think we need to go to L.A.? That ain't easy. (laughs) No, it wasn't easy, man. But I think she just, I mean, she she trusted me. She trusted my vision. I've always given her reasons to to trust me throughout our our relationship. You know what I mean? Always had a plan. I've always, you know, again, I'm not trying to act like I'm I'm God because I'm by no means that. But for the most part, I've made logical decisions throughout my life. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 And over time, you build your credit. Talk about your credit earlier. My credit score was high with her. And she said, you know what? I trust it. Man, you said, bro, you said the thing That's that real. most women don't get. I know we taught that all men are trash, but I feel like the only difference between a good man and a regular man is we just know when to go home. Yep. But also, I feel like you got to trust the guy to him versus trust him. And yeah. that's the part that I feel like that's what made sense. Because even with my wife, man, like, I got I got good credit with my wife too, you know what I'm saying? And I was already I feel like I was a husband before I was a husband. Uh, I feel like I, I was a husband 
Yeah. <laughs> I was a husband. I was in these streets, but I still functioned like a husband when I had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know exactly what he means. That's oh, man. It's the husband. It's, it's hard to explain. If you're there, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But I still feel like my, my wife saw the God in me. So even with this dream we have, my dad has this phrase. He said, I don't mind carrying you, but don't drag your feet. Some women can't go with you because you got to do too much explaining to get you to get them to come with you. But my wife, sometimes she'll encourage me. I'm like, man, yeah, I, I feel like God don't see me. She was like, baby, it's going to happen. Like, you're, you're a freaking star. And like, wake up something inside of me. You're like, you know what? Touche. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to happen. But she got to see it. She got to be connected to God to see the God in you versus trust you. Because sometimes, you know, men, we get lazy and be cutting yeah. corners. Yeah. That's when sin comes. And that's when all the chaos comes. We try to cut corners. 100%, man. Wow. That's real. That's real. That's dope, bro. Salute to you. Nah, I appreciate Shout it, out to man. the queens, man. Shout out to the, Shout queens. Out to the queens, bro. Come on, man. Yeah. Being the wife of a dreamer, bro? It's hard. It ain't it's easy. Hard. It's hard. <laughs> Baby, so just believe been home all me. Day. You just been home all day, huh? Right. <laughs> I got this mm -hmm. feeling, though. This next I'm move going to work, baby. Videos. So you making Instagram videos while well, I've been at work 10 hours, huh? Right, right. No, for real. This Can't next you. move going to work, though. <laughs> Let me going ask you. viral, baby. We're right, going right. viral. <laughs> <laughs> we got 100 views. <laughs> we got seven views, baby. We going up. We there. We seven. moving. We had five yesterday, so hey, it's elevation. <laughs> it must be the algorithm. I only got three today, but you know, it's the algorithm. The devil don't want me to be great. You know how it is. But when I this, when I this take off. the devil. <laughs> That's Maybe hilarious. I should just post it at 10. Right, right. It at 10. I'm going to just take it down and repost it at five. That's when everybody off work. Let me archive this thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we'll come up with any little reason uh, why no, something ain't working. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Man. No, for sure, for sure. Let me ask you this, man. Obviously, again, you know, big time comedian. I want to ask you, at, at what point in your life did you know you was funny? Shoot. It's so many moments, bro. Uh, is it funny that you have when you're, like, not in the craft? Like, I've just been a funny kid. Like, when I was a kid, everybody was like, man, you should be on Def Jam. You should be on Comic View. And, I, like, I'm from a small town in South Carolina where people don't dream, bro. Like, where I'm from, you don't dream. Mm. So it sounded really far away. Yeah. But... And then I remember the first time I moved to Atlanta, that's where I started doing comedy in Atlanta. And I went to a place called Uptown. They booed me and told me to kill myself. What? Um, I, but I, I, I played sports. Like y'all know how I play, when you play sports, I call it having that dog. And every man here, if you play sports, the moment you get dunked on or ran over like one of them hitting drills in Oklahoma, yeah. you decide whether you're gonna keep playing or you gonna join the band. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so because I played football too, when I got hit with that boo, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna figure this out. And I pushed myself because I'm like, I could have quit and we would never had this conversation. But I was like, I'm gonna figure it out. And so I just stuck with it. And with the eight months, I got my first standing ovation. I'm like, oh, this is it. It's a craft behind it. It's almost mm. like being a dope basketball player, but you don't know the fundamentals. It's like the and one player versus right. being in the league. The people that's good, good at and one, that don't work in the league because you got to do a whole career. And the way you do your body when you do an and one player, you it's very unorthodox, which is cool, but that don't mean it's sustainable. You know what I'm saying? So right. um Man, bro, like just staying with it, and it, it happened. Dang. So, so obviously, you know, being where you are now, have you developed a skill where you can read the crowd, where you have specific jokes mm -hmm. for specific crowds? That's funny. Uh, I try to write in the middle. I'm a clean keep comedian too. Most people don't mm -hmm. know, but I write to where no matter what audience I use, I don't have to change my set because I don't feel it doesn't feel authentic to change my set for every crowd. So, I feel like, and I heard Seinfeld say this. He was like. Good room show you how to explore, and then I'm gonna say hood room show you how to edit. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. No, I'm glad you asked that though, because like I, I want to dive into that because I feel like that has to be tough as a comic. Like obviously you have like you like you you know what you what you plan on saying when you go on that stage, but each crowd is its own entity. You might have a mm -hmm. right. young group of, of of black black people. You might have an older group of white people, yeah. and the joke is might the worst. not. Hit. Yeah. College students. Tell oh, us why. Students. Tell us why. Ego. They think they know everything. And they, you know, they think the coolest people on the planet. So you turn 30 and you planet, like, yeah. wait, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I'm old. Like, yeah. Like yeah. life happens. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. but for me, comedy is listening. Cause the crowd will tell you where to go. Yep. It's one thing to be a good talker. Like I know my set, but I feel like when you perfect the craft, 
there's a moment between what's prepared versus living in the moment and trusting just like y'all interviewing somebody you can have all the interview questions but sometimes god give you a divine moment where it meets up with what wasn't prepared and you're prepared because you've had this moment before and you lean into that moment and it'll take you in a direction that changes the whole podcast and by the time you're done you like man we wasn't expecting none of that but that felt like magic it's happening that's right your now ear. <laughs> that ain't talking that's your ear even like when you had, i've had shows where they have a praise break before i go on stage i'm like how am i gonna compete with jesus like i listen mm-hmm. I know how to like listen to the spirit and then I perform, but it's the same thing with life. Like there's a preparation when it meets the opportunity. When those two things, two things come together, that's God touching the ground. Mm. I love that, man. I love that. And, and one thing you, you mentioned a couple of times too is that you're a clean comic. Have you always been a clean comic? Number one, then number two, what, what made you decide <laughs> to, to go that route? That's funny. Oh, uh, I, I was a dirty comic when I first started. I didn't know no better. I just, I, I went with what I was told and what I saw. I was like post Comic View. When po- Comic View was over, yeah. I just when I moved to Atlanta and I was under a lot of Comic View comics. And all I know was supposed to curse. And then there was this young, this, oh, sorry, this older comic named Jerry Farber. Shout out to Jerry Farber, Atlanta, Georgia. He was doing comedy for like 30 plus years, man. OG. He was like, man, you're a good looking comic, man. You're a good looking guy. Why you curse so much? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was right around the time I got saved too, man. And mm-hmm. I remember going back mm-hmm. to the place that booed me. Um, I feel like God told me you can't be mastered by nothing in your life. Don't be mastered by your words in particular. Cause I realized I used to curse all the time, but when my mom or elder was around, I would naturally stop cursing. Yep. And I was like, I feel like I'm being phony if I'm not being myself at all times. So when you see me, how I am with my, my wife, I'm with my boys, I'm in the club. Like me and my wife, we turn up, we have a good time. Like I'm the same person all the time. And I remember going back to the place that booed me. I told you they booed me and told me to kill myself. Yeah. And I went back and I didn't curse. And I performed and I killed it. And I got off stage. And I feel like God sat me down. He's like, all right, now you don't curse on stage, but you curse off stage. And you know you hard on church people because you grew up around church people. If a pastor did what you did, would you judge him? Mm. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, if I call you to minister to the world, what makes you any different? That's when I stopped cursing in my personal life. So you don't curse at all. Like, period. That's wild. Yeah. That, I mean, did it? It's just, man, and I need to work on it too, because I, I I swear a lot, and sometimes it's just. Sometimes if it ain't your thing, just, don't worry about it. Like it's not. Yeah, even yeah, a, no, yeah, but yeah. I think I do need to work on it though. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just curious of how like you trained your mind to do that. I mean, obviously, I think one big piece is like the vocabulary, right? Yeah. And just continuing to enhance your vocabulary and coming up with other words yeah. rather than swearing, but. Um, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I, I admire that. That is, that's pretty cool, especially just to be around your boys, you know, and yeah, you're yeah. Shooting a, you know, you committed shit, to who you, know you are. I mean? yeah. Like, again, yeah. like, yeah, most of us code switch even with our homies versus being who you really are. Like, mm-hmm. I believe in being myself at all times. So, again, I could be around hood cast, church people, corporate people. I'm gonna be my same self, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, when you're clear about who you are and you used to be like black men, we used to morph, like, we got we taught to morph in whatever environment you were. You were you're taught not to feel with your homies. And then when you're around your lady, you got to bring up these feelings that you, you've been, you've been emotionally constipated your whole life. Now you right. got to feel and share words with her that you ain't ever used before. Then with your parents, you know, you can't talk a certain kind of way around your parents. They told you not to feel either. So yeah. what is the normal you? You know what I'm saying? So for me, again, yeah. I feel like part of that journey was not to be mastered by that. This is who I am in my skin. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, only time I curse is when I'm I'm naked, you know what I'm saying, with my lady. That's about it. <laughs> That's about the only time I cuss. Sometimes, if, you know what I'm saying? Can't be like, ooh, shucks, darn it, give me that thing. <laughs> give me some of that stuff. It don't work. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. oh shoot, baby. <laughs> oh, shoot, you doing your thing up in this thing. So- Give me some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. That's <laughs> right, man. Yeah. But again, like that's I feel like that was and so this is the crazy part, bro. When guy had that moment with me, he didn't explain anything else after that. And it's crazy because 2018, I booked the TV show being a dad on Nickelodeon. And I auditioned. When I was auditioning, they got something called a producer session. Regular audition, you auditioning for a casting director. Producer mm-hmm. session, you have the executives in the room because they want to see if they want to hire you or not. When I was done auditioning, it was like, man, like that was really good. He said, uh, I heard you're a comedian. I was like, I am. He said, we heard you're a comedian, clean comedian. I was like, yeah. He was like, man, we're so glad to have you, man, because um, I feel like you're perfect for this show. And it reminded me of that commitment I made to God that wow. he redeemed it by giving me a gig being a dad on a Nickelodeon show. 
sense. Right. That was perfect Does that make sense? for you. Yeah. No, for full sure. circle like, moment. Yeah, it's a full circle moment. Yeah. When I auditioned, I was auditioning with people who played dad on TV when I was a kid. So I didn't think I was going to get it. I'm like, I look too young to do that. But he gave me the gig. And I was like, oh, okay. That's why I said the 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 mantle that he gave me is bigger than what I thought it was. Because when I had when I did that show and I had a kid tell me I'm their favorite comedian, bro. Tears, bro. Waterworks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. I went to the Kids' Choice Awards, bro. Like, you have no idea. Yeah. It's like, he reminded me of my commitment. That's why I said sometimes the stuff God put in your heart is a part of your legacy. But we don't think about legacy. We think about trying to get to, just trying to live till Friday. So the stuff you're doing now, I don't know if y'all got kids. Like, I want my kid to see my work and be like, yo, my dad was a goat. Thanks. You mm. know what I'm saying? I ain't got to change because my kid around. I'm, I am who I am. Mm. Now, if my son need to see me turn up, like, I'm going to turn up if I need to. You know what I'm saying? But he get to see what the standard is. Like, this is what we do. But most people don't know who they are, so they change depending on the environment, particularly yeah. us. Because we got yeah. to gotta be moldable and be like water in order to, to survive in this world. Wow. Man. He, he dropping so many gems. I'm over here just thinking, Bolo, for a minute. Yeah. like, Because <laughs> now, because listen, now I want to ask you this. And you might have already kind of touched on this a little bit. But... Well, how did you find yourself? Because like, uh, what I mean by that is like, like you just said, some a lot of people don't know who they are, and like you said, as black people, obviously black men specifically, you know, we're we're, we're yeah. raised to be able to yeah. co switch. How how do you feel like you know what this is like? This is who I am, and I'm and I'm good with it, and, and like you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, <laughs> taking risks and trusting this process, and sometimes that process ain't easy, man. Like growing up, I always had chicks. Like you know how to dance. I was a frat boy. Like. I always had chicks, bro. So in college, I was a monster. I was an animal, right? But then I always knew God was in my heart because I still went to church. Like, I wild out, you know, party. I still got the club stamp on my hand, and I'm in church, you know, praising, <laughs> full worship. But, my like, smell like alcohol. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then my senior year in college, man, I had two girls tell me a kid was mine, and it wasn't. Mm. Two. Like, when I say two, I'm talking about, like, two, bro. So I'm fresh out of college. I moved to Atlanta. Um, I was supposed to stay with my cousin, my play cousin. I grew up yeah. with him. Um, but my auntie, my blood auntie was like, hey, you can stay with me when you move here. When you get here, just call me. She never answered the phone. So mm -hmm. I wound up staying with my play cousin. I got two kids on the way. Um, and I'm sitting in my head like, and I couldn't find a job. So I'm sleeping on this couch. He used to be roasting me. He's like, you ain't gonna do nothing but get mad and go to sleep anyway. Go ahead and go to sleep mm. on the couch. And like, as a man, it was just eating me up. Right. So I was trying to find a job, man. And in my head, I'm like, if I get a job, I got to pay one girl a third of child support, another girl a third, and I got to pay taxes. Why did I even go to college? And I was at my lowest moment, and I was messing with this married chick. Um, she was, like, separated from her husband, but I feel like I was in a space where nobody wanted me because I had two kids on the way. And But she was going through her situation, so we kind of, like, bonded, I guess, over trauma. Like, she was loving on me, I was loving on her, and she was a really great friend, but she always encouraged me. And... I remember when I first moved to Atlanta, I went to Walmart and I was flirting with this girl, man. And I said, yo, um, hey, you know of a good church around here? And she suggested this church around the corner in Marietta. And I went there for the first time, bro. And I like, I feel like God took the ceiling off, off my house. Like he mm. took, the, the, took the top off. And I remember my pastor saying, God has a plan for your life and a purpose for your future. And everything just started to get clear, bro. Like everything. And he was like, God don't want you to change. Just be yourself in him. And that's when I realized the whole clean comedy thing. And I got started discovering, I got fired from every job I had. And I just go, I go through like the quarter life crisis and everything just fell apart. But when he gave me comedy, bro, I fell in love. And I kept leaning into it. You know what I'm saying? And then I, um, I was probably like church boy for a while. And I didn't have balance because I was scared of going back to my old life. That's, I feel like that's what we, a lot of times we get yeah. saved. We'd be scared to go back to the places we came from because we don't want to backslide, whatever. But then when I moved, to LA, I wild out for a bit. Actually, no, I didn't wild out, but every time I met a girl and I was celibate, she'd be like, you celibate, why are you celibate? And I was like, I forgot, I was celibate so long, I forgot, because <laughs> I know I had this monster. And the more you feed the monster, the more the monster wanna eat. So I was trying to be right. righteous, but you in a place where, that's why I said, you in a place where you mentioned good things, you know how LA is, you mentioned good things and people don't care. They don't care about your Jesus out here. Right. And then I got to a place where I'm like, this don't feel good no more. So I wild out and I went the other direction, but then, I realized when you got that light, as a man, as men, we don't we don't value our light because we rather spread our seed everywhere. But also sometimes the women that we connect with don't deserve our light. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, I know I always had good guy vibes and I always made people feel good. But people that's broken, they, it's like a moth. They love being around light because they make them feel good, but they don't add to the light. 
And then it got to a point where I'm smashing chicks and I know I was good at what I was doing. They always fall in love and it wasn't fun anymore. Every girl I meet was like, oh, you my husband. Cause I went to church and I was a nice guy and I listened, I was decent. I wasn't a right. savage, I was an honest hoe. I tell them, hey, look, you don't know my last name. Yeah. You don't know my last name and you didn't ask me what was up. So don't sit there trying to make this into a relationship because you want me to manage your fears. Like that ain't what we signed up for. You and I made a decision. This is what it is. They be like, you, you, no, I didn't use you. Like I never came to your house. You came to my house. You I don't call me. you. You call me after 12 o'clock and come to my house and we smash. And now you're saying, and I saw you out with one of my homies and you want me to commit to you? Nah, right. we're not doing that. Wow. So then I was like, God, this don't feel good. Cause I, then I started making money. And I used to travel so much. I did a hundred colleges one year. My life fell apart. And God was like, if you had the same hole in your heart and you had the career you say you wanted, what would you do to comfort this hole? And I know it would have been women. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an alcoholic, but I can see why people who are successful, you know, lean into drugs because you get lonely. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, I wanted to find love. And then I dated a girl who she was my candy. That's why God be setting you up. He, she was my candy. Like she was every, every dude got a girl in your head, you feel like you deserve. And I met my candy, but my candy didn't she didn't treat me right. Like she, she broke my heart and, um, man, how do I even say this respectfully? Uh, she led me to therapy. I'm gonna just say that she led me to therapy. The love I saw, like it made too much sense on paper. We made too much sense. She was a church girl from the South, you know, dating somebody from the, from the house. Right. It's just a feeling yeah. where y'all just understand each other's language. And you know what I'm saying? Y'all raised, like I was raised by my grandparents, like Southern people, we got a certain dialect and the won't do it. Like it's a certain way we talk. And she was my candy, bro. And I'm like, I couldn't get her out of my system. That's why I said in love ain't sustainable. And the more I loved her, the more like her love hurt. And it led me to therapy and it led me to like, I wanted to be better. And God was like, if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll never have a life you want. And I said, all right, God, and I surrendered. That's the word. Women talk about submission. Men, we got to surrender. When you surrender to God, he give you everything you wanted. And I remember taking my hands off my life. And that's when my career started popping. And then that's when I got my wife. And my wife, she just... She made me feel naked. It was scary because the way she loved all my little tricks that got me by in life wasn't enough. I know it's a really long answer. Nah, all my little, yeah. the things that for like men, we have these things we put in our tool belt to help us get by. I got by by being funny and charming. My wife, she was funnier than me and she was charming. So none of my tricks worked. And I had to stand there and be naked in front of her. And God was like, you can run or you can have the life you say you want. And I leaned into it and it was terrifying, bro. Cause I felt like I wasn't enough. When I was around her in her space and she, you know, always dated rich dudes and always had yeah. money. And I'm sitting here with this little dream and I wasn't making my money. I was doing all right. Yeah. But bro, like when we lean into it, lean into that thing and we start doing partnership properly, career start taking off. I won an Emmy with, um, I won an Emmy. I wound up doing HBO's Insecure. Um, I wound up um, the dad on Nickelodeon, career start popping. So like now my money getting better, confidence is up and I'm leaning into like, okay, God honors obedience. And so it started happening, bro. When I met my wife, now sky's the limit my wife don't even have to work no more man because like i'm blessed enough to take care of her and i keep saying that not as a flex it's just nah, it's to do what blessing. you love taking care of your family is the biggest flex ever bro even yeah, if you feel like you ain't rich but to be able to take care of your family bro and watch my wife take care of my son and not have to like stress about going to a nine to five best feeling ever so that's a part of my story if that makes any sense at all no nah, it, it makes, of, that's it makes story. perfect sense man and I, it, it's crazy because like you have to go through a lot a lot to get to the space you're in now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't no just clean path. It wasn't no nah. straight and narrow. It's like, it, it's almost like you you had to bump your head. You had to make those mistakes in relationships. You had to, you know what I mean, sleep on that couch for that time being in order oh, for your bro. mind to even get to the point of which God needs you to be at. You know what I'm saying? We live in a microwave society. I know Bolo says that often where today's age, and I know our generation, we want everything right now. And I get it because I... I catch myself in that same space where I lose patience. I'm like, God, why? Like, come on, like we grinding, we doing this. Like, why? Why ain't things going the way I want it to go? And it's like, well, listen, mm-hmm. I, but maybe I gotta evaluate things different. Maybe I'm not ready yet, personally. Maybe, maybe, maybe I am, but maybe God's moving some other things around. But like my the overall point, your, your story is so inspirational because I think people need to hear that just because you're going through a storm right now, that doesn't mean that the, it's not gonna be light at the end at the end of that storm at the end of that tunnel. You have to go through stuff in order to, I think, learn and grow and develop to the man or woman that God is meant, you know, has has you meant to be. You know what I'm saying? So the storm is a setup. Yeah, it's the, the storm it's, is it's the alley You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. My last breakup was so painful, bro. Like literally, I would be, I had anxiety being around her, 
because I turned into, it brought out the kid in me, like the, the scared little kid in me. Yeah. I was scared to be around because she broke me so bad, man. But the tools she gave me during that breakup allows me to be a great husband because I've been through hell to be around somebody who treat me right. My wife showed me how to have an argument and still feel love. I ain't never had that before. Mm-hmm. Bro, we have an argument and I felt loved after that. I grew up in a household. My dad, he drinks, so he would go from zero to a mm-hmm. thousand. And as a little yeah. kid, eight, eight years old, I'm processing like an adult. Like, my dad, is he mad at me? Does he hate me? And he wouldn't remember. And I'm sitting there holding on to it. But to meet a woman who's like willing to stay there and, and talk through your junk with you while you having moments, I'd be like, babe, please don't yell at me. When we first got together, I said, don't yell at me. She said, what? I said, don't yell at me because I said it reminds me of my childhood. I said, I can't process when you yell at me. Your tone is everything. If you download from God, but your tone is trash, you I missed the message. And I said, I'm willing to change anything. I'm never above correction. But if you talk to me kindly, you can talk firm. But just don't yell at me because I can't protect you and protect myself at the same time. Mm. We don't argue like that no more. We don't raise our voice. We talk, you know, I, again, our superpower is funny. So we'll say some slick stuff, but it'll be funny, but it'll be true. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. But we don't yell. Hey. Wow. That's deep, man. That's deep. And I'm not including the family stuff. I didn't get to the family stuff, but yeah, that's that's the long story short of my life. Yeah. Dang, hell of a testimony, man. Now, would you say, you know, I think you, you know, uh, you're in a great spot as far as you know from listening to you of like in your marriage. Would you say the key component to a successful marriage is communication, or is it more to the, to it? Man, um, there's no easy answer to that. Um, one is you got to work on yourself and be willing to the person tell you about yourself, be able to receive. Uh, also, I don't think it's just communicate, it's effective communication, like not just talking. Sometimes people talking and you saying that, like I battle depression. Mm-hmm. So to tell my wife, hey, I feel like the cloud is coming, be patient with me. That's giving her parameters and boundaries for myself on how to love me. Right. Like, right. I'm not well, be patient with me while I figure this out. Because for me, the hardest part about marriage ain't being married. The hardest part for me is why God be dealing with me while somebody in my space. Yeah, mm. that's that's real. That's what I don't like. That's real. Because he'll be I'm, checking me, and then your wife will check you too while I'm yeah. trying to go through it and figure it out. And sometimes I catch my not to cut you off. Sometimes I catch myself like I'm going through my own stuff, and then like I'm taking it out on my wife, and it's unfair. It's like it has nothing to do right. with her. Or she'll ask you, she's like, "Like, what's wrong with you today?" And I'm like, "Baby, I don't even know." Like I, I've answered that just like that sometimes. I'm like, "Because she 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 reads me. She knows when I'm a little like something's going on." Obviously, and she's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Man, I don't even know." Sometimes. It ain't got nothing to do with you though. But like like you said, I'll just tell Shredder, like, listen, babe, I'm just having one of them days, just letting you know right now. So I might be a little quiet. You know what I mean? Just again, effective communication, just so we're all on the same page. We know what's going on. And I think it just it uh it, it decreases those 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 bigger conflicts. You know what I mean? Bro, my wife said I was battling depression. She said, Why you get a world the best version of you? You come home and give me your junk time. Mm. Ooh, that hurt. Bro, what, I'm a high functioning depression. When I have depression, I call it the cloud. I'm still a politician. You'll never know. When I come home, I just crash. And she was like, why I get that version of you in the world? Get to have the best version of you. And I was like, you know what? That's why I said I can't check out when I come home. Yeah. I was like, baby, let me give me a little moment to like decompress. But I still, I got an open car door still. Even when I got, you know, and failed nine auditions, you know what I'm saying? With no money coming in. My account looking funny. And I can't tell her yet. Cause I, I need this thing to happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. I still right. got to show up. That's what love is, bro. It ain't about a feeling. That's people like, up. people think love is just a feeling. When I feel gone, what you do? Cause this crazy part, my longest relationship in my marriage. Ooh. I have a, I didn't have a reference point for what happens when the warm and fuzzy rub, rub off. Mm, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Usually right, you get that right. warm and fuzzy. Like, I can't wait to see you. I miss you mm-hmm. too. No, I miss your faith. When that go away, what does your marriage look like? I, that when that went away, I was scared. That's why I was like, love is, it ain't a fear. It's a feeling. It's a commitment. Yeah. You got to wake up every single day and make a decision that you're going to put that, you're going to put your partner first and you're going, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. really, it's, it's an action. That's why I say love is an action. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think it is a feeling as well. You do feel it inside internally, but it's yeah, definitely an here. action. You know it's I mean? a verb. Yep. Nah, that's, that's real. Yeah. That's real, man. Damn. Well, let me just transition to our to our final seven, man. You know, this is our kind of our, our quick hitters. Where we're going to ask you a few random questions, and we just want to hear your hear your thoughts. So, uh, Bolo, you want to get it started first? You, you want me to get it started first? Uh, I'll get hey, a, I'll get kicked off. All right, let's get it. All right, here we go. So, obviously, comedian top <laughs> five comedians. Oh, all That's time. Tough. No, no all order. Time? Yeah, all time. Yeah, uh, all time. Eddie Murphy, uh, mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx. 
Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Sinbad. Ooh. Damon Ooh. Wayans, and uh, I said Red Fox. You did not nope. say Red Fox. Nope. Red Fox, and I'm gonna say Chappelle. I feel like I'm supposed to say Chappelle. Like Chappelle is dope. I feel like he's Mount Rushmore. He's yeah. He's different. He's just so. <laughs> he, That's a yeah, dope group you though. Say, you have to say him. Yeah. That is a strong. Group. That's a strong list. A strong I, I, I'm group. glad he said Jamie Fox, man. Because I, I do, do too. To me, Jamie Fox is. I ain't gonna lie. He he might be the most talented Versatile. brother that, that, that I like. He can mm. do everything good or yep. great almost. Like music, he's stand up, TV shows, movies. Like he's that man, bro. he's brilliant. I feel like he doesn't get enough flowers. So I'm glad you you threw out Jamie. He Fox. make it look too easy, so we don't appreciate him. He make it look way too easy. Yeah, he does. He does. He can do a person like he can do whatever you need him to do. It's crazy. That man's blessed. So I love that. Let me ask you this. All right, next question. In your opinion, what's the funniest comedic film of all time? So we're we talking movies right now. Uh, I'm going to say Life or Harlem Nights. Oh, Life, Life hey, is my Life, number one. Life, Life got so many quotables in it to me. So He's, many. He said so Life many. or I'm going to say Next Friday. Hey, I, come Ooh. on, man. I love Next. Shout out to Mike Friday. Epps, man. Next Friday. You know where Mike Epps is from. Naptown, Far East Side, Indianapolis, 317. Come on now. Bro, oh, Next Friday was so hilarious to me. Ain't no pool in the project. <laughs> he said, he said, hey, yo, dad, Craig's here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nasty Time. Mr. Nasty, Nasty Time. time. <laughs> he was so happy to see Craig walk in. <laughs> he said, keep I love finger out of my sugar bowl. You feel me knocking? <laughs> then let then me in. He was in he was in he was in a car with, with uh with Ice Cube and Ro. He said, these are black problems. He said, you don't, you don't know how to, these are black problems. <laughs> you Uncle Willie, son. You don't play that. Ah, oh, yeah. Hey, so but life, hey, life is hilarious though from beginning to end. He said, he said, it he is. said, don't you say watch. He said, don't you say don't anything to start with watch. He said, <laughs> he said, if I, he said, you fix your lips to say watch, I'm a slave. Yeah. You on deck? The upper room? The upper the room. Upper room. <laughs> don't be I'm scared. That, I'm that baby papa. What do you say? I'm that baby yeah, I'm the papa. Papa. <laughs> you gonna eat your cornbread? So many quarters, bro. Yes, man. That's funny. RP to Bernie Mac too, because that, that's that's probably my as far as stand up. I got I got Bernie Mac on like my Mount Rushmore. I love Bernie oh, Mac. Hands down so. one of the best comedic actors ever, bro. Um yeah. the fact he played gay and um life and nobody cared. Right. Yeah, no, you know what I'm saying? Like the character true. was, it was a gay character, but nobody cared. He just said it's crazy. True. Like until you just said it, like it's like I knew it, but I, I never I knew it, but I never I never paid attention it. to it. So soft and supple, like a lady, like a lady, <laughs> <laughs> like a lady. That's crazy. Oh man, that's hilarious, man. Let me ask you this, man. So uh, another question here, and this is a little different one, man. So, but I, I, I want your opinion. What's your what's your I guess uh, your overall opinion on uh, social media comedians versus the standard comedian because I feel like there's a there's been some like uh, uh bro, you're trying to stress me out right now. There's been some disagreements online over the years. Yeah. You got some people who like, man, that ain't real comedy. If you ain't doing stand up, then this ain't that. So I want I want to ask you that. Um, I'm from the generation of purist. Uh, getting 19 takes on a on a phone clip is not the same as being stand up. You know what I'm saying? It's a mm. social media comedian that's afraid, but I also believe it's a craft too. It's definitely a craft. To get good at social media, you gotta yep. find your thing. And it takes a while, just like stand up. And for I'm again, you know, I'm from the old school generation where I'm like, I just go on stage and rock out. But you know, in order to have a sustaining career, you gotta get on social media. Like there's no way of getting around it. So I'm also about um updating your software and getting along with the program. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're doing yeah. AM radio and then podcasts take off and you mad, almost like blockbuster video. Yeah, yeah. I you got to update your yeah. software. I know yeah. you, you own a cab yeah. company, but now Uber taking off. You going you gonna to keep complaining about Uber or are you going to update your software? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's a part of it. So again, stand up, most IG comedians, there aren't many that can stand toe to toe with a stand up comedian, even though it's a different craft, but they're probably Instagram comedian. You probably skip the line because you got more followers and ain't nothing wrong with that. It's all, it's what Hollywood is now. It's just melting pot. Got you, got you. Yeah, that was a quick Crazy. sidebar. So just, but you got to work on your craft. Eventually, you can't avoid stand up though. If you're doing social media, at some point, if you're big enough, you are gonna have to do stand up because your people want to see you live because they want that photo. And if you don't work on it, if they shut down Instagram tomorrow, what you gonna do? That's true. It's a wrap. It's real. <laughs> That's real. It's so. real. Last one, Bolo, and we gonna let you go, Ron. Last one before we end the show. So, Ron, answer this question. Fill in the blank. In five years, Ron will be blank. Ooh. Man. 
I'll be making a million dollars a weekend. Okay. Um, I will be the biggest stand-up comedian ever in my lane. Um, I will be a movie star. Um, I will have two kids, mm. probably adopt in three, and I will live out everything that's in my head, plus more of it. Come on now. Hey, it's it's in the there. air. When you it's come to the there. porch and you speak it, it comes to existence. So many times we've had guests come on here and speak things, and then a year later, two years later, whatever, what they said happens. happens. So, Ron, we appreciate you for coming Hard on the, the porch. Time. Let the people know, man, where, where they can find you. Anything you want to shout out or any uh, yeah. where you go, it's your time. Man, uh, I just want to shout out to everybody watching this uh, broadcast, man. I feel like this is an intentional moment. I'm glad these guys even reached out to me. Like, we didn't have any rapport before this, but, man, I'm grateful, first of all, that y'all get y'all get it. Um, but I feel like whoever's supposed to watch this, I hope you get what I'm trying to say, even the things I didn't say when I was trying to share. Um, none of it's easy, but I also feel like this is a generation where you can't. You got to choose a side. If you're going to do this walk, you got to do it all the way. Ain't no mm. lukewarm no more. Like, long time, you, you can get by on doing – Lukewarm 2019, but now I feel like with the currency changing, uh, with our generation being the first generation to question everything, our parents' generation didn't question nothing. Everything. Our generation, we question what marriage looked like, what career looked like, what mm -hmm. faith looked like, what church looked like. This generation, if you don't answer to that thing he put in your heart, you're going to get left behind. And you can't complain about it because he already told you that's what 2020 was. And if you didn't do 2020 and come out there with a certain fire and a certain direction that he told you, you missed the whole point and you're going to get left behind. So for you that are a believer and you really believe in this word like you say you do, again, this is a very divine moment. And I'm telling you, stop playing around. Stop going to your job, complaining about your job when he already told you what you're supposed to do anywhere. You're on assignment on that job. But that next mm -hmm. thing you're supposed to do, don't play with it because, again, you're going to be left behind and you're going to complain and that's going to be your receipt. So I'm for everybody who's supposed to watch this, I'm proud of you. Lean into the thing that make you uncomfortable. Also, you can do single if you want to, but outside going to be way too expensive to do it by yourself in the next couple Ooh, of years. So that's uh, real. I know, like you know, you think you can do it by yourself and podcasts are designed to keep us apart, but at some point you got to cooperate with the opposite sex to get the results you want. And you got to get out of the house. You can't be no homebody and you got to figure that thing out if you really want it. Now, if you want to be single and you want to do it all by yourself and you think you can sustain the dream you put in your head by yourself, good luck to you. I'm not talking to you, but for the people that believe and you know you're designed to be a husband or a wife, you got to get out that house. You got to go live. And if you meet your person along the way, you ain't got to explain them what you're doing. But if you already in your, if you in your nine to five and you comfortable, that thing will rock. Because everybody say the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But also the devil come to keep you stuck. Being stuck is worse. Because mm. he'll give you a lukewarm Christian man like you say you like and never move you anywhere. And you don't use all your good years waiting on somebody who's undateable and ain't trying to marry you. So mm. that's my message to whoever that was. Now, please follow me, Comedian Ron G on everything, Comedian R-O-N-G on every single thing. I'm currently in a movie right now called 80 for Brady. It was number two at the box office. Mm. Uh, my first uh, feature film at the theaters called 80 for Brady. Uh, season two of Partners in Rhyme, which is on WeTV, uh, also on all black streaming service. Um, man, uh, shoot, I got so much cool stuff happening right now. Uh, I got a, I shot a Spectrum commercial campaign. Um, I got so much cool stuff happening, but just follow me, comedian Ron G on everything. Uh, TikTok is Ron G comedian, but comedian R O N G. I post all my dates, and I'm currently on tour with Country Wayne as well, man. So uh, love that. Please uh, catch me now while I'm affordable, because I will be unaffordable soon. And I love thank y'all, man. Price nah, is going most up. definitely, man. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come check you. Like I said, I'm in LA, so I'm definitely gonna come check you out, man, for sure. And hope we get Sunday at the Laugh Factory. Pull up, you and your lady. Yes, come sir. Through. Yes, love sir. That. Come on now. Appreciate you, my oh, guy. also, I hosted the world famous Land Factory Chocolate Sundays, the largest, Ooh. longest running, most uh, diverse TV show. Sorry, comedy show in the nation, Chocolate Sundays comedy show. Uh, I usually post when I'm there because I've been traveling too. But if I'm in town on Sunday, I'll post. Check it out. Love that. There love is. that. There this is. is the Porch Podcast. Hey, just like our man Ron G said, show up, be present. All right. Hey, because if not, you will get left behind. We are mm. on all platforms. Every time you tuning in to the Porch Podcast, you're going to leave with a gym. If not, you ain't paying attention. Hey, and just always remember, the best you is the best you. And we out. Peace. Started on the porch. That was where it all began. Had to put in work. Every day we got it in. We chased all our dreams and now they can't believe it. We make it look easy. We achieving everything we needed. Now we undefeated. If we link, no, it's only business. If we get to speak and leave them speechless. I did things for free, but now it costs to see me. When you see me, you ain't gotta greet me. Just don't plot to sneak me. I'ma see it. I'ma stop and watch you lose and get defeated. What do we bleed? Came from the jungle, we humble but hungry.
hungry and hard and defeat People don't want us to leave They love us and rush to the bus when we run in the streets Thinking we stun in the sea We came from nothing to something, now up in the lead Now we ain't coming in peace Hunting for blood and to crush everyone in the league We got a reason, we put in work every day of the week Every month, every season So many schemes, had to go off for the team We gave our all and succeeded Came from the deep end, warming up pots Cooking ramen at times, that was all we was eating Now we be feasting, five star restaurants every week Whole team dripped in cloth and it's seen They looking hard when we step on the scene Call us out cats, we so fresh and so clean Hand about cats, please don't ask for a meeting Just hit the stoop, got the spaz on the beat Nah, it ain't rude if you ask for the feet Just play it cool when I tax you the fee We need a pool in the back with a cord and a board To go jump off and splash for the heat Live for the day cause the past can't determine the future Or where you gon' actually be Keep staying present, our presence a blessing It's all that we have and we actually need I'm taking action with passion, detaching the ones who keep acting Attaching to leech I am no pastor but actually preaching Look up these letters and actually the read them That was where it all began Had to put in work Every day we got it in We chased all our dreams and now they can't believe it We make it look easy, we achieving everything